in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed your voice and ask him that by his word he will appear unto you tonight someone is praying let it be from the depth of your heart appear unto me set me on fire tonight let me become a light May the Lord bless you. I want to charge our hearts tonight, teaching along the theme. I trust that the word of God will bless our hearts in no small way. And I also pray that whilst you listen, that the power of God will rest upon you. And that everything that represents darkness in your life will give way in the name of Jesus. For the book of John chapter 1 verse 5 says, The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, I'll begin my reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 5, this is Jesus teaching uh, what we know theologically to be the Beatitudes. So he's teaching them the principles of the kingdom. And when he gets to verse 13, Matthew 5, he says, ye are the salt of the earth. Hallelujah. And he said, if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savour, wherewith shall it be salted? He said, it is good for nothing except to be thrown down and to be trodden under foot of men. Then he says, ye are the light of the world. He says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp, it says, and put it under a bushel, but that they put it on a lampstand or a candlestick. And then it gives light to all who are in the room. Then he leaves us with a very strong instruction, verse 16. He says, let your light. The word let there means permit, allow, do not restrict. Let your light so shine before men, he says, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, from a theological standpoint, believers are classified twofold. Please listen. Theologically speaking, the Bible classifies believers, number one, based on identity. And then number two, based on function. Believers are classified based on identity. So we have names like heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Jesus says, I am the vine and ye are the branches. You find that in John 15. Are we together now? The Bible calls us the righteousness of God in Christ. These are all descriptions attempting to show our oneness with Christ. As a result of salvation so believers are classified based on identification but the second is classification based on function because remember man was created in the image of God and the likeness of God the image of God meaning his character his glory his likeness means to function like him hallelujah and then classification based on function now the bible begins to use words like light words like salt words like kings words like priests words like ambassadors these are all active words that demand responsibility and action are we together now and so he says in matthew chapter 5 that you are the salt of the earth 
now salt essentially has two functions as we generally know number one it is to add taste and value hallelujah and it says you are that salt and did you know that it is never too late to add salt in any meal there are ingredients that when you miss the timing you've ruined that meal but not salt even if the food is already served it is not too late to add salt hallelujah so he says you are the salt of the earth the second assignment of salt is to preserve it was an ancient strategy that was used to preserve things before advancement in technology opened up more doors for a more superior ways of advancement he says you are the salt of the earth then he says you are the light of the world he likens the believer to a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden in other words visibility is the destiny of every believer that on no account should any believer be locked up in mediocrity be locked up in defeat he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden then he says neither do men light a lamp provided that lamp is lit it is not permitted to be under are we together now he said it is not proper to light a lamp and put it under when you light a candle and put it under it will become destructive am i right because it sustains the quality to burn it will burn everything above it because it is supposed to be above so anything that is above that candle it interprets it as an enemy even if it's your bed or your table it begins to burn it so the character of a candle is not supposed to be under that provided there is light on that candle it must be above does that look like what the bible say about i say about you that you will be above only and not beneath shout a loud amen so it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but that that lamp is put on a lampstand and that it gives light to everyone in the room he says in that similitude having this understanding let your light so shine before men god wants them to see your good deeds and by it they will glorify your father in heaven now it is important ladies and gentlemen to understand results are profiting for the kingdom it's important to know that when believers bear fruit that is how jesus is glorified in john chapter 15 when you begin to read from verse 8 the bible says herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples 15 and verse 16 of the same john it says you have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit is that true and it says that this fruit should abide or remain so he desires that we go and we bear fruit jesus is glorified when his children are glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 the bible says jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and he prayed this prayer he said father the hour is come he says glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee galatians 1 and verse 24 the bible says and they glorified god in me god can be glorified in a man if that man is you shout a loud amen. amen that means a man can become a reason for god to be glorified across a territory that when people look at you and they see the excellency of the workings of the spirit in your life the kind and the quality of results that come from your christian experience it is able to birth glory that men will look at such an individual and say indeed god is good may that be your testimony that from tonight the results that begin to unfold from your life they will cause that your life becomes a living epistle in the name of jesus christ ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 paul says he says we are his workmanship you know what that means a workmanship means the tools that 
an artist or whoever uses so if you are a carpenter your workmanship talks of the hammer the chisel and all you need the bible says we are his workmanship that means every time god wants to manifest a dimension of his glory the tools that he will use are men you and i we are his workmanship paul says he says created in christ jesus unto good works is that in your bible which god had foreordained that we should work in that means god is not wondering what to do with your life and my life that there is a prophetic script that has been written whether you walk in that reality or not is a different thing altogether but that it is in your prophetic destiny to be great it is in your prophetic destiny to be the light do you believe that hallelujah it's important you convince yourself in blessing abraham genesis chapter 12 when he called abraham who was at that time was an idol worshiper from or of the chaldeans he began to propose certain blessings that will come upon him and he said i will bless you i will make your name great i will bless them that bless you he that curses you i will curse he says and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed that was the blessing unto abraham galatians 3 29 now says if ye be christ he says then are ye abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that means everything he told abraham is valid for you today through christ hallelujah influence is the destiny of every believer in christ genesis 17 and verse 6 he says i will make you exceeding fruitful it says that our kings will come out of you nobles out of your loins he began to prophesy that you are not supposed to be small i'm showing you all these scriptures to convince you once and for all that the destiny of greatness is your heritage in christ Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 it says if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and to observe all that I command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and then it says these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list the blessings my question is do you believe because the Bible says, blessed is she that believes. For unto her, there shall be a performance of the things that were spoken of the Lord. Say after me, I am the head and not the tail. Say, I am a light to the nations. Hallelujah. If you are getting blessed already, shout a loud amen. In Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18, Isaiah 8 and verse 18, very powerful scripture. It says, I and the children, oh, we have it projected here. I and the children whom the Lord has given me. That means this blessing is not just for an individual. A family can step into it. That I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Look at me, please. A sign is a pointer when you are headed a location the moment you begin to see signs they tell you you are close to that location that means your life should point men from any direction they are coming from it should lead them to Jesus your life becomes a sign and then a wonder may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and he says great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all in other words if my life and your life becomes barren of glory barren of results there is a dimension of glory we are robbing God from receiving on earth if your life does not communicate excellence and victory and glory this is why I know that everything that is not of God that has followed your life to this point in the name of Jesus standing upon the grace of our father I'm declaring to you by the power that raised Christ from the dead that it leaves you once and for all Let me give us three keys tonight that will help any man, and that includes you, to become a light indeed. 
a light in the United States, a light across the nations. There are no prejudices and there are no biases with God. The kingdom operates based on patterns. And if you understand the patterns that are allocated for every result, you will command that result. Because the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. And it says the same Lord is rich unto all. You see, there are certain blessings in the kingdom that the Bible will say he gave unto some. But when it has to do with victory and exaltation, it is the destiny of all men. We have been raised up with Christ, it says, and we have been made to sit at his right hand, that place of glory far above, and it begins to list them. Principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but even in the world to come. Hallelujah. Three keys very quickly. And I want you to please pay attention as we discuss these keys. These are the keys that have turned ordinary men to become signs and wonders. Ordinary men to become lights, beacons of light to their communities in business, light in ministry, light in politics and governance, light in career, light in family, regardless the geography of your assignment. If you understand, believe, and practice these principles that you are about to learn, there will be no limitation to your rising. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, it says, shine. It says, For your light is come. Notice it never says, Arise and shine because you are tired of sitting down. In other words, time will not change any situation. It takes an active participation of light. Arise, shine, it says, For thy light is come. Amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Then it says, for your light is come. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. Then it says, for darkness shall cover the earth. Is the Hebrew word tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos. The same darkness we see in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2. For darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, the people, it says, that but upon you that light would rise. Verse 3, I love verse 3. It says, Gentiles shall come. You will not have to look for them. They will come. Gentiles shall come, not to you. Gentiles will not come to you. They will come to your light. That means if you are not carrying lights, there is no reason why they should come to you. Gentiles will come to your light and then the kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles, for someone as a result of this conference, men you did not expect, they will hear about you. They will hear about the workings of the spirit. I'm prophesying to you by the spirit of the living God. Strangers will call you and say, I have heard that your God is alive. I have heard that your God heals. I have heard that your God gives children to the barren. I have heard that your God can turn a man's life around. Show me that God. Please sit down. The Bible says where the carcasses are, it says there the eagles will gather. Hallelujah. Was it not John Wesley who said, set yourself on fire? And he says the whole world will come to watch you burn. When there was a burning bush, provided there was light and fire, Moses said, I will turn aside. When you become a light, you become too notable to be ignored. I will turn aside and see this great sight. And when God saw that he had turned aside, he said, Moses, now I have used light to get your attention. Take off your shoes from where thou standest is holy ground. Number one, the first key that can cause any believer to become the light, to manifest as light, is called an experience with God. Please write it down. The first biblical requirement to becoming a light indeed is to have an experience with God. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. The God you experience 
is the God you reveal to your world. The God you experience is the God you reveal to your world. Hallelujah. In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, let's hurry for time. Daniel 11 and verse 32, the B part says, but the people that do know their God, notice he says they are God. They are God, whatever that means to you. The people that do know they are God, they shall be strong upon the strength of that knowledge and they shall do exploits, not talk exploits. Exploits is not a discussion, it's a doing. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong, capacity, stamina, and they shall do exploits. Hallelujah. An experience with God, I wrote here, is the basis for your confidence in this kingdom. The believer's com confidence is derived from his experience with God. When you see men and women stand with audacity and face life without fear, it is not because they are not human. It's because they have outsourced confidence from an experience that is greater than any circumstance. Why will you fear when you have met the burning bush? Who is Pharaoh when you have met the God of the Bible? Listen, fear is proof that there is need for a higher encounter in your life. Because the character of encounters among the many things they produce is that they erode fear. Confidence is not just a, is not just a mechanical manifestation of a bold face. No. No. When you have seen the Lord, when you have encountered the Lord, when he speaks to you through his word and says you are the head, no matter what else tells you at the tail, you don't even worry because he has spoken. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongs to God. Hallelujah. So when God says, I am lifting you and men say you will not rise, you watch them in shock and wonder, hoping they get to learn a lesson once again that there is a God that rules in the affairs of men. Listen, believers, we are not a weak and a beggarly people. Our weakness is a report card. It's a proof that we have not encountered the God of the Bible. Read your Bible and watch ordinary men who were transited to a bold version of them at the instance of their encounters. A stammerer called Moses with no leadership ability whatsoever. He meets the God of the Bible and receives a mandate. And with that boldness, he stands before Pharaoh. He says, I came with a message. Let my people go. They have been for 30, 430 years. The longevity of the captivity notwithstanding. I have come to advocate their exodus. A young boy called Gideon who was hiding the least in his father's house as soon as he encountered a mighty God he says you are a mighty man of fellow he did not call him and describe him by his fear then he says go in this your might something has come upon your spirit and the Bible says Gideon blew a trumpet and 33,000 people showed up When men encounter God, they start behaving like God. When men encounter God, they start behaving like God. How do I know that? The Bible says, as we behold him, we are changed into the same image we are looking at. It says, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Then it says, we all with unveiled face, beholding him as in a mirror, we are changed. You are changed to what you are beholding. When you behold weakness, you will become weakness. When you behold defeat, you will become defeat. Are we together? The righteous are as bold as a lion. Is that not what the Bible says? I'm not talking of destructive boldness that leads to law and order. I'm talking of confidence that is derived from knowing that he stands behind you like a mighty terrible one. 
Hallelujah. It is true that when God has vowed to lift a man up, woe betides the man who stands your way. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I am bold. I reject fear. Say it. I reject fear. Open your mouth in one minute and pray. I reject the spirit of fear, the fear of the future, the fear of my destiny, the fear of my children making it. For God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Someone is praying, I reject fear. I reject fear. As a student, pray. I reject fear. It's been five years without a child, but I reject fear. Ten years without a job, but I reject fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated. An experience with God. Please listen to me. An experience with God will demand hunger and thirst. You are never going to find God if you are casual about him. It takes a desperation that is greater than looking for money. A desperation that is greater than looking for fame. A desperation that is greater than looking for titles. Jeremiah 29 and verse 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me only when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek God as an extra advantage to be added to your life. After all, you already have many more things. You will never find God that way. His jealousy demands that you seek him above everything everything if you're a man of God here respectfully speaking let me beckon on you to listen because end time ministry demands an encounter beyond oratory situations and circumstances will ask you who sent you mm. the sicknesses will ask you who sent you when you say be healed don't you think Satan will just quietly go uh -uh. did he not say who is the king of glory when he said lift up your head the gates replied back and then there was an answer the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle <laughs> hallelujah the miraculous flows from a place of genuine hunger Lord I need you more than a job I need you more than children you are my life you are not just a religious advantage to my life I have learned the value of pursuing your presence these are the kinds of people who will become light to the nations men and women who through hunger they have used the currency of hunger to buy an encounter Mm, because hunger is a currency you can use it to buy an encounter in Genesis chapter 32 Jacob was so hungry for an encounter the Bible says when he was alone then came this man ah I sense such a strong anointing in this place such a strong anointing in this place such a strong anointing I believe that the Holy Spirit is doing something supernatural, supernatural, supernatural in someone's life. I believe that healings are happening as you are listening. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake these things, it says the Holy Ghost fell on all they that heard him. Hallelujah. Listen, let me encourage you. I know that we live in a busy world today 
and I know that responsibility demands that we are occupied trying to make ends meet. But let me bring you a word of encouragement. It says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. My Bible, I don't know about yours. My Bible says, the watchmen watch it but in vain. It says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. It says, but he giveth his beloved sleep. Hear me. One counsel of the spirit in the place of encounter can redefine the next 20 years of your life. We need to reawaken a generation to understand the value of his presence. The presence of God and the pursuit of spiritual things is not an interruption to your becoming great. It is the reason why you become great. A great job minus God is only a cycle of frustration coming. Intellectual prowess minus an encounter. Eventually you will know that any the horse can be prepared for battle. But in truth, safety is of the Lord. By this first point already, I'm charging someone's heart that you need to be angry at the fact that other things are taking the place of God in your life. And by this conference, begin to redefine your priorities. The place of prayer, the place of the word, the place of fellowship. That when people say, are you not busy running around? You will tell them, I have learned that running around without God will only waste my energy. i rather stay and ask him, should I pursue? Should I pursue? And one answer from his majesty can say, pursue and overtake and without fail, recover all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible mandates that the believer walks circumspectly. The word circumspect means accurately because the unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving a portion of your life and your destiny to. So you do not have the time to keep guessing and shadow boxing your life only to find out after 15 years you were at the wrong direction, then return back again. The Bible says that template is not a victorious template. This is why he gave us the Holy Spirit. This is why encounters are platforms for accuracy. With precision, you can know the next direction. For there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Number two, please be seated. I just saw like a veil. A veil. This is what I'm seeing. A veil just lifted from someone in the name of Jesus. I prophesy over someone that veil that has covered your glory so that no man can see Christ revealed in the name that is above all names. We tear that veil now. In the name of Jesus, we tear that veil now. That veil in your business, that veil in your family, that veil in your ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.